कार्डियोवेस्कुलर डिजीजेस आर दी वर्ल्ड नंबर वन किलर लेट ए बी हार्ट अटैक्स और स्ट्रोक्स बट देर आर सो मेनी फैक्टर्स विच आर लिंक्ड विद कार्डियोवेस्कुलर डिजीज प्रोग्रेशन सो डू वी नो ऑल दीज फैक्टर्स टू नो मोर वॉच दिस वीडियो What's up, everybody? This is your nutritionist on the go, Kaval Deep Singh Ojla from Eru Diet Nutrition. Cardiovascular diseases. We have been working a lot on this topic. Do watch the other videos that are already on my playlist of cardiovascular diseases. And now let's jump on to the factors that affect cardiovascular diseases. There is no such thing as one or two particular factors on which the cardiovascular disease can be pinned upon but there are this variety of factors which we have to take into consideration. Now in this video I will be sharing multiple different factors and aspects of human life and we will relate it with cardiovascular diseases. The more factors that you have in your life, the higher the risk of cardiovascular diseases. So we will start from this end of the board. So let's see what's the first factor that might affect cardiovascular disease. So it is hypertension. Yes, hypertension is one of the leading cause of any cardiovascular diseases. Let it be a stroke or a heart attack. So if you are suffering from hypertension and you are taking regular medicine for that, you need to change your lifestyle and diet so that we can cover up this hypertension in a natural way without the help of drugs. Second factor, smoking. So if you are a smoker, it is going to drastically increase your risk of a cardiovascular diseases or a heart disease because smoke inhaled is actually harmful for your lungs as well as it disrupts the whole respiratory system of your body. It also has a very negative effect on the arteries of your heart. So smoking is a very big factor. Next factor is cholesterol. So again, in the previous videos, we have discussed how an elevated level of cholesterol has to be taken into notice, but in particular, cholesterol is not a risk factor or a majority risk factor. But still, if you do have elevated levels of cholesterol, you have to see what is the underlying cause of that elevated cholesterol. So you need to change your lifestyle, your diet may be inflammatory or your diet may be a typically standard Indian diet or a standard American diet for say with including a lot of refined oils and junk food. So if your cholesterol is high, rather than taking statins, go for a more natural approach and fix the underlying issues. Don't only fix the high cholesterol, but fix the reason why your cholesterol is high. The next biggest factor diabetes diabetes is a huge factor when it comes to cardiovascular diseases because diabetes hyperglycemia is actually too dangerous for each and every nerve and cell of our body and this includes all the capillaries veins and arteries that we have in our body it weakens the cardiovascular system and an inflammatory response can create damage in these nerves or arteries. So diabetes is a very big factor. You got to check control on your blood glucose levels. Next is obesity. See, obesity is somewhere linked to cardiovascular diseases because when it comes to obesity, there are higher chances of diabetes and higher chances of hypertension and even higher chances of having an elevated cholesterol. But being an overweight is not a sole factor. Yes, it is one of the factors. These all are the one of the few factors which might lead you to a deadly path of cardiovascular diseases. So you have to check in all of them. And on this side, we have alcohol. Alcohol consumption above a certain limit. For me, that limit is too low. It is close to zero. If you are having alcohol on a regular basis, it is going to cause huge impact on your liver as well as it can lead you towards diabetes. Okay, so we need to check in your alcohol consumption also. 
So now coming on to this side of the board, what we have here is what's at the top? It is sedentary lifestyle. So if you're not working out or you're not having uh, much of a physical activity, overall it will decrease your arterial function. Along with it, it is going to hinder the proper oxidation supply of your whole body. So if you're not working, if you're not walking or jogging or cycling or whatever kind of physical activity, if you're not doing anything, you're living a too sedentary life of office to home and home to office, that actually increases the risk of some of these factors like obesity and hypertension and diabetes, thus increasing the risk factor for cardiovascular diseases. So what's next? Family history. So you know, till now we have been talking about issues that are in our control. Okay, maybe we are having hypertension because we are eating too much salt or we are eating too much stress or smoking or drinking or obesity. But now it comes to family history. We cannot change our family history. If there is a trend of cardiovascular accidents and diseases in our family history, you cannot change that. You cannot go away. It has a hereditary link, but it is not definite that if your father or your grandfather or some of your family members had a heart attack or a stroke, it puts you in a risk category, but it is not a sole factor. You can change it. You have to intervene. I say, if you do have a family history of cardiovascular accidents or diseases, you should change your lifestyle immediately. So the next is ethnic background. Uh, now, globally speaking, uh, we have Asians, we have Africans, then we have Europeans, Americans. Geographically, some races are more prone to this cardiovascular diseases. So there is nothing we can do about it. We Indians do have uh, a higher chance of getting a cardiovascular diseases. It all has to do with the geographical relation and the climate and your genetic composition, your DNA, including your family history and your lifestyle in the community. So this is something we cannot change, but it's no harm in leaving away uh, inflammatory lifestyle for a healthy lifestyle any day. Next is age and gender. So as per age, as you grow up in age, your chances of cardiovascular disease increase. What I have seen in recent years is there is no age for a cardiovascular accident. It can happen at any time. I have seen people in their early 30s or even in their late 20s having heart problems or hypertension or diabetes or obesity, which all contributes to cardiovascular accidents. Okay, so age was a primary concern that young people might not get a, a disease related with this, but now it's not the case. So next is gender. Well, men have more chances of cardiovascular accidents than women. These are facts, we can't change them anyway. Uh, this is one of the most important factor. It's inflammation. Inflammation in my eyes is the biggest factor of them all. Because if you're diabetic, if you're overweight, if you're hypertensive, if you're alcoholic, if you're a smoker, all these also contributes to increase in inflammation as well as stress, anger, depression, sleep disorders, irritability, and always if you are in a sad or in a crying mood all these anxiety factors and depressional factors increase the level of inflammation which i believe is one of the biggest factors among all so these were the few factors which actually contribute to cardiovascular disease in one way or another the more number of factors that you check positive for the higher your risk of a cardiovascular accident is now how can we change the pattern how can we get ourselves saved from this number one global killer we have to focus on this side of the board the most important thing is your diet that's why i am here for erudite nutrition is your nutritionist on the go you can consult me if you have any of these factors and you want to change the future outcome of your health we will work on your diet 
to clear out any markers of cardiovascular accidents, let it be blood pressure, let it be diabetes, or uh, increase in cholesterol or triglycerides. And we might also work on your weight. If your body weight comes down, your health markers start to improve. If your diet is good, your inflammatory markers start to suppress. If your lifestyle is changed, now lifestyle includes diet and the way you live your life in terms of depression, stress, anxiety, happiness and sadness, as well as your physical workout, your sleep and all the chores that you do along with your life. These are the three factors which can change the whole scenario of your health. So guys, we have discussed majority factors which can lead to a cardiovascular disease, a heart disease or a stroke. So whoever is watching this video, you guys need to assess all these factors. Check that how many of these factors are in your life. What's your weight condition? What's your body mass index? How is your blood pressure, your blood glucose, your cholesterol and triglyceride levels? Are you living a sedentary life or not? Are you working out or not? Are you taking too stress? Are you having proper sleep? All these factors can save your life if they are corrected one by one. I don't have a magic stick. I cannot just change your world in a snap of a finger. We will work on all these factors together. If you're liking this content and if you are new to my channel, subscribe the channel on YouTube and click on the notification bell icon. You can also follow me on Facebook and on Instagram. The reason I want you to follow me on all the three platforms is that you do not miss any information video that I ever post. Stay connected, stay healthy, and if you do need a help in changing your diet or lifestyle, Eater Diet Nutrition is your nutritionist on the go. I'll see you guys next time. Until then, take care.